Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Susan Abernathy from the Angelo State University Mathematics Department and today uh, in our video series for Math 1332 Contemporary Mathematics we're going to be talking about section 1.1 basic elements of an election. This is the first section in the voting theory chapter and we're going to be talking about elections that you would typically think of. So elections like presidential election, local political elections, elections to select officers in a student organization, that type of thing. And in all of these elections, we're going to assume we have voters. We have uh, ballots, a way for voters to cast their ballots. We have a voting method, and we'll get into different types of voting methods in the subsequent sections in chapter one. And then we have the outcome, who's the winner, and what type of outcome do we see? And we're going to begin with just some basic terminology and first things first, the majority of votes. <clears throat> and that is the smallest number of votes that's strictly more than half the votes. For instance, if you have 11 votes, then the majority is going to be 6. Half of 11 is 5 and five and a half, and smallest number bigger than that is 6. Majority is also 6 if you have 10 votes. Half of 10 is 5, but majority has to be bigger than half, so we get 6. All right, now preference ballots and preference schedules. Preference ballots are the ballots where voters rank all of the candidates rather than just giving their top choice they rank every single candidate from the one they think is best to the one they think is worst and in the preference schedule we consolidate all voter information so we're going to build a table that takes the information from every single ballot and condenses it into an easy to read table. All right, types of election outcomes. We can get winner only, which is exactly what it sounds like. The only info that we get is the winner. And we can get a full ranking. So there, it's sort of the opposite. We get all of the information. Uh, so we get a ranking of all candidates. And partial ranking, uh, we get, say, maybe only the top two or three. So here we rank only some, maybe top two or three. All right, let's go ahead and talk about our first example. We're going to construct a preference schedule, this table, that's going to hold all of the information from the following 21 ballots. All right, <clears throat> so what we're going to do, each column is going to correspond to a ranking that shows up in the ballots. And this blank at the top, we're going to fill in the number of voters that voted that way. So let's go ahead and sort of organize our data here. We've got a uh, one ranking C, E, D, A, B, and let's go ahead and figure out how many of those we've got. Here's a second, here's a third, here's a fourth, and here's a fifth. So we've got five that are C, E, D, A, B, and now let's move on to the next one, A, D, B, C, E, and let's find those. So it doesn't look like there are any more in the first row, but here's one in the second row. Here's one in the third row. So there we've got three that are A, D, B, C, E. Next one, B, E, A, C, D. No more of those up in the first row, but here's one in the second row. And here's one in the third row. So three voters voted B, E, A, C, D. And 
and what's the next one? A, B, C, D, E, alphabetical. I should mention here, we've got five candidates, right? Candidate A, B, C, D, and E. All right, here's another person that voted that way. Uh, one more, here's another, and let's see, there's one more here in the third row. So we've got five voted A, B, C, D, E. And let's see, D, C, B, E, A. Here is D, C, B, A, E, not quite what we want, but here's one that is D, C, B, E, A. And here is one more that's D, C, B, E, A. So there was three D, C, B, E, A. And what's this last one? D, C, B, A, E. That's these last two ballots, D, C, B, A, E. All right, now what we're gonna do is take all of this information and consolidate it in this table. <clears throat> Typically, we're gonna use the columns uh, to rank sort of most voters voted this way to the least number of voters voted this way. So the largest number we've got here is five. So let's go ahead and take this first one. Five voters voted and we're gonna just list who they ranked first to who they ranked fifth. So C, E, D, A, B. And then the next most is five voters voted First A, then B, C, D, and E. And it doesn't matter which of those five goes first, just that we list both of the fives in the first two columns. Now let's move on to our threes. Three voters ranked them A, D, B, C, E. Three voters ranked B, E, A, C, D. 3, B, E, A, C, D. And we've got another one with 3. 3 ranked D, C, B. Let's make sure we get the order right. E, A. And those last two voters, very similar. D, C, B, but this time it's A, E. And here is our preference schedule. We've taken all of those individual ballots and consolidated in, into this table. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the second example, but we'll keep our preference schedule up because we are gonna need it. Uh, what we're gonna do here is construct an alternate preference schedule. So we're gonna take this information and we're gonna just present it in a slightly different way. So rather than ranking, listing their rankings from first to fifth, we've got the candidates listed over here and we're gonna write in the rankings that the voters gave them. So we're gonna take this column and translate it to be first down here. We've still got five voters. They ranked C first, E second, D third, A, fourth and B fifth. And now we are gonna do the same thing for each of these columns. So we'll take this one, translate it to B down here. So we could think about this a slightly different way. This one's gonna be kind of easy. They ranked A first, B second, C third, D fourth, and E fifth. All right. Now our third column, three voters, they ranked A first, and then let's see, what do we need to fill in here? B, well they ranked B third, so we're gonna fill in third for B. C, they ranked fourth. D, they ranked second. And E, they ranked fifth. All right, now we move on to the next column up here. Move that one down. Uh, let's see, they had B first, E, 
second, A third, they had C fourth, and they had D fifth. And our next one, again, we've got three voters. They had D first, C second, B third, but they had E fourth, and A fifth. And remember our last column is very similar to the previous one, but there was two voters, so they had D first, C second, B third, but they swapped the last two. So they had A ranked fourth and E ranked fifth instead of the other way around. So here we have two different preference schedules giving us information about the same ballots. All right, now let's move on to our next example. We have an alternate preference schedule and we're gonna convert it to conventional preference schedule. So we're gonna do the opposite of what we just did. So here we've got the number of voters filled in and their rankings here for each candidate and we want to do <clears throat> uh, go back to listing the candidates here. So these 37 voters, they had B first. So we get B first here. Second, they had E. Third, they had A. Fourth, they had C. And D, they had fifth. And we're going to do the same thing with each other column. So here, these 36 voters put A first and B second. D, they had third. So we fill in D. Fourth, they had C. And fifth, they had E. And now our column with 24 voters. Let's see, they had B first and A second. So B first. A second and then D and E they had third and fourth so D and E and they had C ranked last all right now these 13 they had E first second and third was B and C so second was B third was C and then fourth was A fifth was D and the last column let's see they had C ranked first second was E third was A fourth was D and fifth was B so we've translated it from listing their rankings in the column to just having the rankings static on the left and listing their candidates in order. And this is the typical preference schedule that we are going to be looking at. All right, so a few questions here. First, how many people voted in this election? And what we're going to do there, well, this, is, this table gives us information about all of the votes and these five different rankings are the only ones that appeared and we know the number of people that listed those rankings. So we just need to take these numbers at the top and add them all together. So we're gonna have 37 plus 36 plus 24 plus 13 plus five. And that is going to give us 115. All right, so 115 people voted in this election. Now, how many first place votes are needed for a majority? And remember, majority has to be the smallest number that's bigger than half. Okay. So we want to know what half of 115 is. 115 divided by 2 is 
57.5. We need the smallest number that's bigger than that, which is going to be 58. So 58 is our majority. And last question in this example, which candidate had the fewest last place votes? Okay, well let's tally up the candidates that appeared last here. So D got ranked last by 37 people and 13 people. So 37 plus 13, and that is gonna be, let's see, 50. E got ranked last by 36 people. C got ranked last here by 24. And B was ranked last here by five, okay? And this one's sort of tricky. You might think, haha, it's five, fewest number of last place votes. But what we'll notice is that A got ranked last to zero times. So A is the candidate that has the fewest last place votes. Okay, the last thing we wanna address here is ties. Uh, we're gonna deal with ties on a case-by-case -case basis depending on what voting method we are talking about. So we're not really gonna mess with them here. We'll deal with them possibly in the later sections depending on that voting method. All right, that is the end of section 1.1. Thank you for watching and I hope you look forward to the next video.